Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule. Now, roll tape! It's time to tell you about the night that Nazis arrived in America to sabotage our war efforts. The project was called, uh, named after Franz Joseph Petrorius, who is the first German to settle in America. And in Germany, Amer English-speaking Germans were recruited. Now, that was no problem because approximately 40% of the German population actually speaks German, and the man who led one four-man team, George Dash, had actually lived in America for 20 years, variously as a waiter, a salesman, and even joining the army. And he had returned to Germany. He led this four-man contingent that was brought to America by submarine and led off on the night of June 13th. It actually, it's just after midnight. June 13, 1942, four saboteurs land on Long Island. Immediately, they bury huge cases of explosives. Along comes a Coast Guardsman, unarmed, who is patrolling the beach. He saw what they were doing, but Dash offered him $260 in cash as a bribe, which the man accepted. The four so-called saboteurs then went into New York City. The Coast Guardsman, however, reported what he saw to his superior, a contingent of Coast Guardsmen went out and dug up what was buried, and they found chunks of coal that actually had explosives in them, pen and pencil sets that were actually blasting caps and detonators, and other types of paraphernalia that would make 007 jumps. Now, what about the four saboteurs? Well, they had no idea where they were, but Dash had been given $86,000 for the project. That's the equivalent today of $750,000. So what were these saboteurs doing? Enjoying themselves in New York City, spending the money on wine, women, and song. They forgot about becoming saboteurs. And in fact, a few days later, Dash apparently had second thoughts or didn't want to be caught. He turned himself into the FBI and divulged the entire plot. Now, at the time, J. Edgar Hoover took credit for smashing the spy ring. But he had nothing to do with it. It was just the incompetence of these saboteurs. And it turned out there was a second contingent that landed in Jacksonville, Florida, and had gone into Cincinnati and Chicago. They, too, were arrested. We had eight saboteurs caught almost immediately. Originally, it was thought they'd be facing civil charges and perhaps get a few years in jail. But FDR, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, wanted them executed. He wanted to send a message to the Nazi high command that saboteurs will be dealt with ruthlessly. Six of the men were executed in an electric chair in Washington, D.C. just a few weeks later. Dash was given 30 years, and another saboteur given life imprisonment. Now, in 1948, Harry Truman did pardon the two who were still alive. They were exiled to Germany. But amazingly, the German high command did pay attention. And as far as we know, there were no other acts or even attempted acts of sabotage in America by Germans or even Japanese agents. Maybe a few minor attempts, but we were virtually free of sabotage in America, despite movies such as Smashing the Spy Ring and The Saboteur. So let's look at some competent saboteurs here who aren't involved with wine, women, and song, who stick to business in this scene from the 1943 serial, The Mass Marvel. These are agents working for the Japanese spy, Mora Sakima. Let's see how they work. Whoa! was very untimely, but fortunately, I know how to use his compound. Are you sure it'll work? Positive. Nitrolene plus gas plus heat makes a highly explosive combination. Mace will have no difficulty in getting this compound into the gasoline storage tanks. And we know this gasoline is to be shipped to the Russian and British Air Forces. As soon as a plane using this fuel is thoroughly warmed up, it will be blown to atoms. Well, if your explanation is correct, what possible connection can there be between an air raid force and the king of agents? We'll find out when we question the warden of Sector 20, Zone 9, Force 3. It's going to be a practice alert, just checking on your lights. Well, we're always blacked out here, Warden. So I see. Do you mind if I use your phone to make a report? No, no. Right this way.
Fictional saboteurs, sportsmen, the real life ones were incompetent. Yes. An excellent serial there again, the Mass Marvel. Now, until next time, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>